Hello, this is Sylvia Breckney Merrill. And I'm Janine Bruce. Today we're going to talk about ethical issues when conducting mixed methods research. In our presentation today, we will discuss ethical issues in both planning and conducting a mixed methods research project. We'll be discussing these issues from the perspective of participants, researchers, and the Institutional Review Board. We'll also be discussing strategies for increasing the integrity in a mixed methods research study. So first, thinking about the participant perspectives. In mixed methods research studies, there's often a greater burden to participating. First, in mixed methods studies, there's just generally a greater amount of identifying information collected. Additionally, there are more types of information that may be collected that haven't been collected in other research designs. Additionally, informed consent is more complex than with one method alone. So in a mixed method study, it may be harder for the researcher to explain both, for example, survey and qualitative data collection, or what if you're adding observational data as well. So it may be harder for the subject to comprehend all the different types of data collection. Additionally, if your data collection involves multiple phases where you may need to follow up and contact your participants, it may require more time than if they had not participated in a mixed methods investigation. Additionally, you may find, as with other studies, that there may be risks of participation that may be greater if it involves illegal or socially undesirable topics. For example, identification of participants could put them at risk if behavior is known or become known to others. Thanks, Janine. And now we'll be talking about the researcher perspectives. So some significant issues when conducting mixed methods research studies is that quantitatively focused researchers just may not be as familiar with qualitative research procedures and ethical issues around it, nor on how to integrate these issues in an ethical manner. As Janine noted, writing human subjects applications themselves might be more complex since the research design themselves is inherently more complex. And the consent forms also tend to be more complex but they need to be kept simple for the participants to better understand, especially if we're thinking about literacy in general and health literacy for target populations. Conversely, when thinking about qualitative research, data collection as well as the analysis tends to be more emergent in nature. So there might be some uncertainty in the original protocols when submitting to the institutional review boards or consent forms with patient participants. So if surveys, you might have predefined domains of interest, or you might end up having emerging questions depending on your mixed method study design. Again, with interviews, questions may change during the study where there might be some unanticipated topics that are sensitive in nature that could arise and might be also distressing in nature. Finally, to consider, voice recordings can be identifiable, such as voices, names might be mentioned during audio recordings, places, etc. And there needs to be some sort of mechanism in place to provide protections or remove the data prior to analysis. One thing to consider is that emerging designs, especially if you are considering this for your mixed methods research studies, usually require amendments. And so be prepared to make modifications in advance for when the data collection is actually needed. This includes sending amendments to your research team as well as the institutional review board. When thinking about recruiting participants, focus on being able to explain the risks for the subjects themselves and protections in place that preserve the anonymity as much as possible. And this includes a de-identification process when using that. You should consider having a system in place for recruiting and tracking participants, particularly over time or for follow-up, which is likely in a mixed method study. Plan to only collect the minimum necessary information with this balanced need to track the participants over time. So consider how much you do need to use names during interviews, for example, or can you use a pseudonym or have a de-identification process in place. When submitting protocols for ethical review, consider preparing a comprehensive research protocol in advance, include a figure of your mixed methods research design in a timeline, and submit that along with the rest of your application. Keep the language and description in plain language and simple as possible for reviewers to assess the overall risk for each participant, both for their participation, but also from a data security and tracking standpoint from the researcher end. It's important to consider estimating on the high side for the number of participants needed for quality of data collection 
because this participant size and sampling strategy might change over time. But as a reminder, you will have modifications to your protocol and amendments will likely be made. All right, let's briefly talk about the perspectives of those on the Institutional Review Board. So the responsibility of the IRB is really to evaluate risk to human subjects. IRBs may not understand the key mixed methods research terms. So some tips to think about is really being clear about what your mixed method study involves. Be very deliberate in terms of explaining all of the various steps. Make sure that you adequately describe the safeguards that you have in place to protect those participants at every stage of the research process. When you're using multiple data sources and methods, you need to explain how these are going to be used to answer your research question and explain to the IRB why you need multiple sources rather than just one. Additionally, mixed methods research often has jargon that we use. For example, we will use a sequential explanatory mixed method design that begins with a survey and is followed up with a qualitative interview to explain the findings. The idea of a sequential explanatory mixed methods design alone will not be enough to ex adequately explain to the IRB what you're doing. You need to describe which of those stages involve which type of methods. Additionally, review boards often have their own regulatory language. So think about the language that you use that will be readily understood by your IRB review panel. For example, thinking about using terms like participants will definitely resonate with the IRB rather than more specific terms such as doctors and nurses. And finally, we will discuss how to increase integrity in your mixed methods research projects. So for each method, be sure to keep the same rigorous standards that are common practice for both quantitative and qualitative studies. This will enhance each data collection type's reliability as well as trustworthiness of the findings. By collecting multiple types of methods, attention needs to be paid as to how the data are integrated in the analysis to better enhance and offset the threats to validity for each method. So for example, integrating quantitative data after qualitative interviews will enhance the generalizability of the findings. Some things to consider. Investigators might be more intimately linked to their research and the participants, and your participants might also be more linked to each other. So for example, this is true in implementation science studies. Therefore, you as the researcher need to consider how to preserve the confidentiality of each participant, how to elicit honest opinions about people who might be friends or colleagues in the workplace, who will eventually have access to the data itself, and then how will the findings be reported. So a tip here is that planning, transparency, and rapport building are key, both within your team and with your participants. When reporting mixed methods data, ethical considerations are still in effect. Be sure to report the data in aggregate because there may not be enough variation in participants by role, units, or even sites to ensure confidentiality of the findings. So in summary, when thinking about ethical issues when conducting a mixed methods research study, definitely consider your audience when preparing your project. For example, thinking about those opportunities to educate reviewers about the IRB about what mixed methods studies entail. Also be flexible. Amendments are going to happen and you can really use your IRB to your advantage to help make those revisions so that you have the most sound protocol possible. Be timely. Recognize when those amendments may be happening and anticipate that and give IRB enough time to help you make those modifications. Who knows, you may be partway through data collection and realize that you want to collect a new round of data to enhance your overall study findings. And finally, think about mechanisms available to protect both participants and research integrity in mixed methods research. And here's a great reference for thinking about mixed methods best practices overall. This concludes our presentation. Please feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions about ethical issues in a mixed method study or mixed methods designs overall. Thank you.